trying to continue their own tradition. The 2013 final awaits Gene Prince. Uh, with uh, Nathan McKinnon and uh, what's kind of going through your uh, mind and body as you get set for this very big game. Yeah, obviously a couple butterflies coming into it, but uh, you know, we're confident bunch of guys and um, you know, like I said, a couple butterflies, but I think that will work as well as we get started and it should be a fun game. Do you think that having a few days uh, rest uh, will provide you with an advantage depending on the length of this game? No, I don't know how much an advantage it is, but it's definitely not going to hurt us. Um, you know, Portland's going to come out strong and they're going to be ready to go and we definitely have to match their intensity and hopefully things work out tonight. As you know, you had a great game in the round ramen against Portland. Are you thinking that you can try and match that tonight? You know what, I'm not coming with too many expectations. Um, just the expectation to win and, and play my game. That's what I did guys, in the past few games. And, um, you know, expectations make it harder. So, you know, I'm just going to try to work hard both sides of the puck and move my feet and hopefully good things happen. Nathan, thank you and good luck. Yeah, thank you. Nathan McKinnon, uh, half of his... Uh, Shreddy's official cereal of the CHL, and we will start with the visiting team in this final. The Portland Winterhawks, Matt Carruth. He is an overage player, so this will be his last game in junior hockey. He's from Shorewood, Minnesota. He was the WHL Western Conference first team all-star goaltender. He was the Western Conference goalie of the year and is the all-time winningest WHL goalie with regular season and playoff games combined. For the Halifax Mooseheads, it will be 17-year-old Zachary Foucault from Rosemare, Quebec. He is a QMJHL first team all-star goaltender, and he is the franchise leader with wins in a season that was 45 of them this year and all time wins as well. A little tight right now. Well, if there has been a part of Portland's game that has not been good at the Master Guard Memorial Cup, their penalty kill. They've allowed at least one power play goal in every game they play. Jonathan Drouin gets it to Albert Hauser. He scores! Conrad Albert Hauser on the power play and the Halifax Moose Hens lead 1-0. This is a really good adjustment here for Dominic Ducharme and the Halifax Mooseheads. Normally you'll see Marty Burke in that spot, but once he moves down to the half wall, that redirects the attention. That leaves Albert Salzer with a lane at the top of the umbrella. His cannon shot on the one time on the perfect pass from Duran makes it one nothing. And again, you just look at that little tiny subtle move by Duran. He draws Raddy away from him, and then that opens up the lane to get it to Albert Salzer. A big shot there from the German-born defenseman and the Mooseheads are on the board first. Stop it and get more on it. Shot from Pouliot. Screen shot missed the net. Durant gets it ahead to Albertshauser. Nathan McKinnon leads the rush for Halifax. Oh, what a beautiful goal by Nathan McKinnon. Big players in big games. And McKinnon makes it 2-0. start to be having nightmares about what happened in the first meeting between these two clubs. Right off the draw, Halifax is able to, after the shot from Portland, break out. And you can see good puck support here on the rush. Now it's a simple fact of getting a guy who just wants more than everybody else. As McKinnon comes across the line, he's one against three. He's able to kick it from blade to stick. And that element of surprise with a quick shot gives the Halifax Mooseheads a 2-0 lead. Some offense. Jonathan Drouin trying to make a move one-on-one -on -one against Wotherspoon. Got it down low to Nathan McKinnon. McKinnon, a couple of good moves. Got it back to Drouin. Up and that is first. Oh, the Mooseheads. A thing of beauty. Call it three. What a lead. Oh, boy. This is something special right here. Jonathan Drouin, great vision, great hockey sense, and the finish by Burke is big league. Drouin tries to make the move here to get around Witherspoon is a tough pass, but he doesn't give up on the play. It's a simple chip down to McKinnon. Now McKinnon makes a beautiful pass to Drouin, and Drouin with his head up before he even gets the pass. He knows that Burke's open. He just needs to find the lane to get it there. He puts it there right in perfect position for the one-timer, and Burke with that bomb of a shot not likely to miss. Look at the flex on that stick. The torque. Derek Pouliot realizes his teammates need a change. He might get in. Got a back hand on Brucelli and Brucelli was tight to the post. A chance short-handed. Portland scores. Nicholas Patan a short-handed goal. And the winner Hawks are back in it. Let's say goodbye yet to the highest 
scoring team in the Western Hockey League, and this is good persistence on the part of the Winterhawks and great recognition. But the San Jose draft pick, Conrad Albertsauger, plays this very soft. As it goes down the wing, he lets Pouliot go to the net. If he plays a little harder on him there and can disengage man for puck, this wouldn't happen. Raddy takes control after the rebound, and from there, Nick Patan sneaks down, and he's able to pick up the goal for the Winterhawks, a much, much needed goal, and his first of that turn in this hockey club. The last seven minutes have been great. Pouliot, another shot, missed the net. Leipzig kicks it alive. Raddy knocks it down and scores. Portland gets another one. It's 3-2. Halifax still leading. RJ, you said it best. Went off the top of the broadcast. Braddy scores big goals in big moments, and none bigger than this right now for the all-time playoff goal scoring fashion. Well, that last angle is probably the, the best look at it. And this is a big call coming up. Oh boy. I don't know if he did get a stick on it. I don't think he touched it. I don't think he touched it. He does such a calm job there, but it's the Cowley skate that actually kicks that puck in. A lot of consternation as they continue to go over all of the different looks that we're able to provide. Oh. Oh, Portland came close to creeping to within one. That one's disallowed. It's still 3 1 Halifax. That one's disallowed. It's still 3 1 Halifax. And Gene is never too far away from Stephen when he's on the ice. McCauley has decided to honor her memory by putting Mom on his hockey sticks. It's uh, just another way for Stephen to make sure Mom sticks with him. Correct. And it's a touching story because when he was traded from St. John to Halifax, the final game of the regular season, those two teams met. Well, the day before was the was funeral for bounced a bit. The down low. Jones working against McKinnon. Jones goes down low behind the net is Red. Hi, Ratty back to Jones. Scores! Seth Jones! There's a big goal late in the second for Portland. Well, you look at all the talent out there on the ice. You got a San Jose draft pick with a couple of upcoming first rounders in Duran and McKinnon. And then you've got Weatherspoon, a Calgary pick out there with Braddy, a St. Louis pick. And then Patana Jones expected to go early in the National Hockey League draft. Jones likely number one. And it's Jones who ends up coming up with the goal. And excellent work there by Braddy. Got his back to the boards. He's facing the play. And Jones does a nice job getting open. And then the finish for a defenseman, a tall one at that, who doesn't have a lot of room to work with, makes that one step in to open up the door even more. And Portland has found life once again after this right off the post. A delay through the roof. McKinnon, he can shoot it too. That just missed the top corner. McKinnon circling the net, bouncing puck. He scores! Nathan McKinnon! What an effort! Halifax goes up 4-2. What is not to like about this guy? This is the power game. This is that lower body strength, that hockey lower end, if you will. Burke gets a good chance as he comes cross ice and Ty Ratty like hits the post and a good job here in the neutral zone as a quick re regroup here for Halifax allows them to enter the zone with speed shot misses McKinnon doesn't give up on the play look at his body positioning right here he swings his rear end around that eliminates Rutkowski and he takes two whacks at it so persistent is McKinnon he can't make the first one he goes skate to stick to back of net brilliant play by Nathan McKinnon. Not in front of him, Duran trying to steal that puck. Here's Leipzig. Leipzig gets around his man. Hello in front. Bjorkstrand stopped by Bukele. Big save for Zachary Bukele. Now look out. McKinnon's down there. The puck drops in front of him. Looking for the hat trick. Head stop. Rebounds in. Conrad. Abelshauser. And the Moose heads are up 5-2. The last 15 seconds, it's a two-goal swing. That's exactly what this is all about. And it starts with Zachary Fucali in goal. The 17-year-old netminder, absolutely brilliant on this chance. Leipzig creates the two-on-one Bjork stand stop, and it goes back the other way. One outlet pass from Duke. Absolute brilliance here by Jonathan Duran. He puts it in a place only McKinnon can get it. From there, they crash the net. 
excellent puck support by Alex Souser to finish it up. And the Halifax Mooseheads take a 5 2 lead. You said it, Sam. What a pass by Bruin. Oh. North America's toughest championship. A game defining moment as Leipzig gets in and gives it over to Bjorkstrand, but an excellent save by Fukali. And a short time after that, left pass saved by Fukali. And Mooseheads would go up ice and score. A two goal swing created by that save. There's Leipzig. Drops it off for Patan. Deflected. A rebound. They score. Oh, you don't want to count Portland out. There's the big line coming through. Leipzig puts it in. And with 5.28 to go, Portland's down by two. Almost two, two points in the tournament for Brendan Leipzig, who had 120 points in the regular season. He's finally able to add. And watch the knuckleball effect this puck has. That's why Zach Bucali can't control the rebound. It, it has a knuckleball type flight to it off the stick of Patan. And as it bounces back out, Leipzig is there to grab the rebound and does a good job getting enough weight on it to get it over top of Fucali and into the back of the net. And no quicker do we talk about the high surround. Brady has it in front of the net. Patan's all alone. What a play by Zed Fucali to get a stick on it and knock it away from Patan. Wow, Patan. I mean, sitting there, waiting and waiting and waiting some more. He got in behind that Halifax coverage as Leipzig makes a beautiful creative play. And then, of course, the toe drag there for Ratty. And he's got his man all alone in front of the net. And Patan can't get a stick on it because Fukali makes the smart play and just throws the blade of his stick out there to direct it out. Couldn't convert. No, the wraparound. Did Carruth get there in time? Halifax is celebrating. Referee saying no. It's not a goal. Well, Leipzig gave. McCauley a whack with the stick in the rear end because McCauley had started to celebrate, but there was no goal call made on the play. It was the Mooseheads who, in fact, started cheering early. Mooseheads, they just want to celebrate. Off the face off, Fournier. He takes it right in. Both checked by Carruth, and then he has to make a huge save on Ashley. Mooseheads don't want this one to slip away. Under 10 to go. Up to the line, fully on a shot. Bucali to save. Four seconds to go. Back in front. Mooseheads get it. Hold on the ice. Out of backs. You can celebrate your first title. The Mooseheads are junior hockey's best. even begin to imagine what the celebration will be like now. What a game. Just when you thought the Mooseheads would run away with it, Portland battled back. Then the Mooseheads, another big lead. Portland battled back. Nathan McKinnon, Jonathan Drouin. What a couple of players they are. Halifax can be proud of those two guys. Back to Ruth, over H player. His junior hockey career comes to an end. Chase Delio, it's tough to take for these players. So close, such a good year for Portland. Not used to losing. And they worked hard to stay in this game. Kept battling back. Came close to tying it, too. Zach Fucali, he had some big saves late. And once again, Fucali does just enough to get the job done. Couple of big saves. 44 shots on goal. Fired through Cali's way. He stops 40th. Moosehead celebrating now the handshakes. Captain Trey Lewis from Aldwayne, New Brunswick, leads his team. Well, these two teams certainly entertained in the championship game. We expected they would. Halifax was number one in the CHL rankings. Portland number two. And that's how it ends in this championship game. Halifax is number one. 
The traditional handshakes now. May this be the last game for Seth Jones, for Nathan McKinnon, for Jonathan Drouin. And there it is, number one and two, good buddies with the handshake there. Team Canada teammates, World Junior team, that was McKinnon and Wotherspoon. Players, great goals, uh, but one has stood out a little bit more than anybody else. And now time to announce the Stafford Smythe Memorial winner as the event most valuable player from the Halifax Mooseheads, Nathan McKinnon. Congratulations to Nathan and uh, all the great help he received from his teammates. At this point, we'd like to welcome the Canadian Hockey League president. Trey Lewis, Stefan Fournier are the co-captains, but because of what we saw tonight, five-point performance out of Nathan McKinnon, the 2013 Memorial Cup Championship will forever be known as the McKinnon Memorial Cup. Back to Gene Princeman. Darren, thank you with uh, Nathan McKinnon, and uh, what has this all felt like for you? You know, this is unbelievable. Um, you know, these 20 guys that we played with all this year, and um, to win it in this style, it's a really close game, really exciting. And, you know, I'm speechless right now, and it's an amazing feeling. Can you describe just how you stepped up in the round robin against Portland and then again tonight? You know what? Um, I think it was a full team effort. Uh, personally, it wasn't just me, I think. Uh, everybody played unbelievable, and it's obviously nice to get a couple. Can you describe just uh, all the talk about the draft positioning, and not necessarily that you wanted maybe to make people wonder about the first overall pick, but how you felt about your play and proving that if you are first overall, you've earned it. You know what? Um, I don't think about too much the draft right now. This is probably the best moment of my life. And um, obviously, I want to have a good tournament. I'm not sure how the draft will go, but um, right now, I'm just going to enjoy this. What's the best part of winning? Celebrating with these guys. Um, they're brothers. Uh, you know, we love each other. And, um, you know, the feeling right now is indescribable, and I can't wait to celebrate with these guys tonight. And we're going to let you do that. Thank you, Nate. Thank you. Appreciate it. What a great tournament on the part of uh, Nathan McKinnon, uh, Darren, and uh, of course it is the MasterCard Memorial Cup, but I think you'd have to say that his performance was, you guessed it, priceless. And what is really amazing players in the world when it's all said and done, Nathan McKinnon, Jonathan Drouin, with their best games of the tournament in the final, add to that list, Zachary Fukali. Here's Gene. Uh, thank you very much, Darren, and uh, Zachary Fukali still uh, celebrating it <laughs> sorry for intruding uh, but it is a moment that uh, you want to share with your teammates and certainly with Halifax fans and all the fans who've watched uh, CHL hockey on sports and all season long uh, what's it like to be a champion it's uh it's uh I don't even know what to say I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone's gonna say the same thing but I mean a big thanks to all the boys it's all uh, it's all we all deserve it here and thank you to everyone all the fans Halifax my family here with me. Thanks to everyone, staff. Couldn't be happier. This is awesome. What did you think about this game? Because your team ran out to such a nice early lead, and then it was pretty tense all the way to the end. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Portland certainly gave a good fight. I mean, it's, it was for sure they weren't going to give up, and I think uh, it was one of the longest games I've ever been in. And 
I'm really happy the boys gave it their all and we, we came out with it. We, we came out with the last win of the season. This is awesome. Zachary, thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Go enjoy yours. Thanks, Gene. Zachary Fukali, who uh, is Nathan a, McKinnon. Zachary Fukali. Here's Jonathan Duran. Well, here he is, uh, the man who was the magic man when it came to assist tonight. But um, you discuss your night, Zachary Fukali, Nathan McKinnon, all the the big players coming up with big time performances when the team needed it. Yeah, I think we did that all year. You know, when this pressure game, I think we performed well. And uh, once again, it was a good game for us to tonight, and we're pretty proud about it. I should mention Marty Furk as well, because uh, your line was uh, dominant tonight. What were you able to do to have the kind of night that most lines dream of? I think we were just trying to find space. You know, uh, we started hard work down low, me and they cycle, and uh, Marty's got a great shot to finish, like on the fourth goal. And uh, I was proud of that. Chance, baby, number one. Oh, he's already taken off. Well, Nathan McKinnon, um, what did you think of his leadership uh, in, in this game, almost saying, I'm going to will our team to win? Oh, Nate, Nate was great tonight. You know, uh, he stepped up his game even more than what he stepped up already. And, uh, you know, a hat trick to finish the tournament off. It's great for Nate. Jonathan, uh, thank you very much and enjoy yourself. Thank you. Uh, they're off to uh, take a group shot, which has become uh, customary. It's interesting, uh, uh, Darren, Damian, and Nick, uh, Nathan McKinnon, Picks up Jonathan Duren to go to school every day. And I think after tonight, both these kids seem to be in the driver's seat. Now the question will be who goes number one? Seth Jones, Jonathan Duran, who had an outstanding season, was the Quebec League's MVP, was the Canadian Hockey League's top player. And then you have Nathan McKinnon. Top uh, prospects will all go to the National Hockey League Combine in a couple of days. So you got to get your head around that. And then the NHL entry draft. Do you think that? the tide turned towards Nathan McKinnon or Jonathan Duran at this tournament. Well if the tide turned at the World Juniors and it did because that's really when it turned in favor of Seth Jones I see no reason why NHL scouts wouldn't look at this entire tournament and see it turn back towards McKinnon. Look you've got three downtrodden NHL teams in Colorado Florida and Tampa. None of them are going to go wrong in that draft next month. They're all going to get a special player. I see Drew in his third but mostly because of his size but tonight yes. you see that vision and ability he's going to play in the NHL he's going to put up big numbers too Nick. It's really hard for for a team now to just take the sole talent of Jonathan Duran and pass up on the power and explosiveness of uh, of Nathan McKinnon or six foot four defenseman in Seth Jones. I, I don't believe that Duran can compete with that on the first two picks but I certainly see him at third with the Tampa Bay Lightning and then hooking up with some guy named Steven Stamkos. Pretty nice consolation prize for Tampa since they didn't win the uh, NHL draft lottery. And lest we forget there's a bunch of other great prospects. So not only are these three guys the top three prospects in the world they're the top three prospects in the world in, in a year in which the draft class may turn out to be one of the best in the past. 10 to 20 years. It really is supposed to be that good. How do you think this Halifax Mooseheads team will be remembered? As Nathan McKinnon's team, as Jonathan Duran's team, I, we've said it off the top that, you know, Junior now has become a bit of a big business. Uh, it's high profile and it's driven by star players. And tonight in the 2013 Memorial Cup, driven by star players, but a team that followed their leaders. That they never gave up. You know what I loved about this team too? They didn't sit on a lead. They still had their top players charging away and and trying to put this game away. And that's exactly what McKinnon did on the on the game clinching goal, the empty netter. A couple of things I think I'll remember about Halifax. First of all, they're the third team from the queue to win in three years. Yep. And we remember not too long ago, people were saying, well, you, you can never win the Memorial Cup. That's number one. They win in a Western Hockey League season for the first, or, uh, city for the first time. But also it rewards Bobby Smith and Cam Russell, the owner and GM, respectively, of the Halifax Mooseheads for going out on a limb two years ago and making a trade with Bay Como in which they gave away three first round draft picks and two good players and then had to trade another player away to get uh, draft picks just to get Nathan McKinnon. We had Bobby Smith on the other night and I said did you think he'd be this good. He said no but they did it anyways and holy smokes it shows you sometimes that big risk that big gamble can pay off for you in a championship. And, you know the other thing too is obviously as it's as it's star driven for Halifax 
maybe in a few years we're going to find out how good this team is if we start seeing some other names come off of this championship. You know, we talked about the big four on Portland on the blue line led by Seth Jones, but I thought tonight Halifax blue line was exceptional. Albert Hauser with what two goals tonight. Uh, Weger had a terrific Memorial Cup. Yep. We didn't talk about him a lot and Hardy as well. Those are the names that really stood out for me in this championship game. And even Trey Lewis who wears the C when the Mooseheads play at home. He wore the C tonight. He boy he's a blood and guts type uh, back on that blue line. His dad's an MMA fighter. Yeah. <laughs> of course he is. And Ty Ratty and the Portland Winterhawks Travis Green. Uh, that top line was brilliant again tonight. Ty Ratty went toe to toe with Nathan McKinnon the whole tournament long. That's the trophy. The Memorial Cup. It shines bright for the Halifax Mooseheads. This season started with comparisons between Nathan McKinnon, Jonathan Duran, and Seth Jones. The defenseman won the World Junior Championship, and he won the top prospect game. But head to head at this 2013 MasterCard Memorial Cup, Nathan McKinnon, Jonathan Duran answered back. For RJ Broadhead, Sam Cosentino, Nick Kiprios, and Damian Cox, Darren Millard, hoping that you enjoyed the week. We leave you with Gene Principe. Saskatchewan is a place.